I do want to jump into our first presentation, and I do invite you to give your attention to someone who will become your friend if he's not already, uh, Dan Niederman, and he's joined by his wife there, Betty, as well, who just snuck out but came back. Um, Dan is going to share a presentation with us, and Dan has a vast uh, work history and experience, not only in the military, but also working with the government. And he is going to share some vital information for us as we think about what the foundation of MCC is in terms of how we relate to government agencies and what all those things mean. So Dan, we are very happy to have you uh, on board with us this morning and excited to hear your presentation. I'll get your screen ready, but the time is yours. Thank you very much, Pastor. So if I can tell you all that if you have a question, there is a chat box and it's over on my screen. So if you have a question, just type it on the chat box and I'll see it. So um, here's my introduction slide. If you can go to the first slide, Pastor. So this is from Ministry of Healing. All gospel workers should know how to give simple treatments that do so much to relieve pain and remove disease. Jesus was always taking care of people first. And then he was talking to them about the kingdom. And we need to follow his model. And so we need to have the ability to take care of people. And that's what MCC is about in Florida. Next slide, please. So in order to take care of people, we're going to need to be part of a system. And the system we're part of is called the National Incident Management System. It's a system that is across the United States, and I'm going to just use some quotes from the system itself. It says it's a comprehensive national approach to incident management that is applicable at all levels and across all disciplines. And the idea of this is that we're able to work with others in an organized manner. Next slide, please. So the National Incident Management System was set up after 9-11. During 9-11 in New York, there was major confusion. People did not know how to work together well. The fire department knew how to put out fires. The police department knew how to change, chase criminals. But when we were dealing with the aftermath of 9-11, with all of the contaminated environment, with all of the mass fatality, with all of the different situations and all the different domains, the hospitals, the community at large, there was not one system that was able to be used. And that is why President Bush then instituted the National Incident Management System. And this system is not new at, in 9-11. It was actually previously used by the fire departments on the West Coast for fighting large fires that go over multiple states. Next slide, please. So we're going to talk about some key concepts. If you see in the corner here, we have a standard organizational chart. Next slide. Click, please. So we're going to talk about unity of command. That means that in a command structure, there is one person above you you report to, not two. And that below you, everybody knows they report to you. So that gets rid of confusion. Next, click. We're going to have common terminology. We're going to manage by objectives, which means we have to know what we're trying to accomplish before we start. Next slide. Click. Pedro. Okay, the organization is modular and it's flexible. Keep going, Pedro, just run through them. There's a span of control. That's the number of people you can have working for you at any one time. There is resource management built into it and there's communications built into it because one of the major shortcomings in almost any incident is going to be communications. And the last thing is what we call an incident action plan. There's a standard set of documentation and um, reporting for incidents that are used across all domains. Next slide, please. So 
For us as the MCC, we are starting with the basis of being compliant to NIMS. We're asking that all brigade cadet members register with a FEMA st uh, student identification. And in order to be registered, you should have already gone through FEMA and gotten your SID. Um, as a minimum, we need to all have the basic um, vocabulary of incident management, which is why we take IC, uh, individual study 100, 200, and 700. And those courses are all part of our curriculum. Next slide, please. FEMA has organized an enormous resource in training. There are over 200 courses available. What's more is Frederick Community College in Maryland has partnered with FEMA so that they can assemble courses for college credit. At, I think the cost currently is $78 per credit hour, which is very inexpensive. And on top of that, FEMA also sponsors um, residential training. And when you sign up for a resident training, you can get your meals and your travel all paid for. And these classes are taught in basically all over the United States. We are starting at the basic level. As we progress in developing the Medical Cadet Corps, we are going to need our leaders to start to take advanced training. And when we approach that, we're going to end up with our own Cadet Corps of instructors who will be able then to teach and they'll be able to teach them um, on our schedule. Next slide, please. So we are going to try and become what's called type classified. And that means that our organization fits a piece of the national incident management system. That means we are going to have our people trained and qualified in a certain way. We're going to establish relationships with our local emergency management agencies and we're going to maintain qualifications so that we can credential our people as qualified community emergency response teams. Next slide, please. Oh. So, in the long and the short of it, the bridge between the National Incident Management System and the Medical Cadet Corps is going to be the curriculum and the qualifications of the community emergency response team. So next slide. The community um, emergency response team curriculum is a 20 hour normally residential course. It has nine units. We're gonna talk about what these units have in them to begin with. And the idea is we as a cadet corps are currently gonna be taking these courses and qualifying teams. Now a team is normally five people, a leader and four members. And the reason that number is important is because that is the perfect number under emergency management's concept of span of control. In our squads, we're gonna have two teams and when we start talking about the organization in Florida, we'll go in more detail on that and somebody else's instruction. Please give me the next slide. So CERT training can only be, look, be delivered by instructors that have complete, completed the FEMA qualification course to train the trainer. Eventually we will have our cadre of instructors, but until we have our instructors, we need to rely on our local jurisdictions, the fire departments, the emergency management agencies, and the Florida CERT Association to provide us the qualified trainers to conduct our training. Next slide. So the first course is going to be a disaster preparedness course. It's normally two and a half hours. So we're going to talk about hands-on skills, team building exercise, and also some basic physical uh, kinesthetic tasks, such as turning off utilities. And in Florida, we're gonna probably focus more on hurricanes than we are going to focus on um, earthquakes because those are what we're locally vulnerable to. Next slide. The next unit is fire safety. In that, we're gonna talk about the theory and of the behaviors of fire. And then we're actually gonna talk about fire suppression. And there is normally a hands-on fire drill 
of using a fire extinguisher to put out a um, burning um, object to make sure, because everybody's walked by a fire extinguisher a thousand times without ever thinking, do I really know how to use it? And once you've actually physically used it, you'll feel much more confident. Next slide. So the next unit is disaster medical operations. And this is gonna talk about um, um, triage. And triage is nothing more than sorting people out and prioritizing who gets care first. And then we're going to be talking about certain kinds of um, skills such as uh, um, uh, bleeding control. And these are all the basic levels that are required of a CERT team. We are going to, as a medical cadet corps, have higher standards, but we will always ensure that we meet the minimums of the CERT team so that we are able to meet any mission that they would assign a CERT team. Thank you, next slide. So the second block of medical operations talks about mass casualty operations, public health, and treating in um, injuries. So we are going to obviously um, be very focused on this because as we all know, we're in the middle of a historic public health situation. And the, um, the hope is things will get better, but if they don't, voluntary agencies are gonna become more and more critical to provide resources to protecting our community. Next slide, please. So block five is talking about light search and rescue operations. I'm sure you all know there are search and rescue teams that are specifically trained for that. The objective of a CERT team is that we become extenders for such resources and that we would be able to do light work and identify those objects that are beyond our scope. And that's what the um, heavy search and rescue teams would take care of. And this way we can get through an area of impact much quicker because they are able to only focus on those tasks that are more complex and the simpler tasks are less to the CERT teams. Next slide, please. Uh, block six is having to do with the organization of the CERT teams. Um, this has to do with um, how they're deployed, how they're organized and how they work within a larger emergency management um, organization. Next slide. Block seven has to deal with disaster psychology. It's just a quick introduction. Um, this talks about critical incident stress management and dealing with trauma. Um, this is a area that we as a um, medical cadet corps and the ministerial aspect that we're able to provide will be able to enhance and provide additional resources. But as a standard, we need to make sure we're all qualified um, to the basic level. Next slide, please. Uh, block eight has to deal with terrorism and the aspects that um, led to the formation of the current national incident management system and vulnerabilities that terrorism provides. Um, there's a tabletop exercise as part of this block. And last slide on this block is the course review and a disaster simulation. And this aspect goes through a full um, standardized exercise where there are standard performances measured. And at the completion of this, we have a certificate of completion that qualifies the member as a basic CERT team member. Next slide. Okay, additional training. CERT teams can specialize in things such as amateur radio, shelter operations, flood response, and overhead management. So we as a team, once we meet the basic standards, will need to on a regular basis refresh in the basic skills. But then as a local group, we can choose what areas we want to then expand our skill sets in and work towards those goals. Additionally, as I said before, FEMA has 
many other areas of coursework that we can bring into the mix to continue developing our ability to be a resource for our community. Next slide. So what is it we need to do? We need to have minimum standards that we meet. We need to uh, ensure every person has a pathway for their individual growth and skill development. When we, um, we need to have each unit sponsored by their local church, and we need to make sure all our acti activities are actually sponsored. The reason we have it that way is that way we are covered by church insurance should any unforeseen event occur. When we do activities as a team or a unit, we need to have those activities documented. And that documentation process starts with orders that are cut by the brigade um, headquarters. We need to have activities planned. We're not going to just, oh, we'll just do what we did before. We need to have a active process of planning. We need to maintain accountability. And there's a FEMA form we're gonna teach everybody how to use, it's very simple, that covers the basics of accountability. And it goes back to the formation of an um, incident action plan. And then the last, but probably the most important aspect is responder safety. I appreciate the pastor's conversation and story about going through a lake uh, with uh, um, contaminated water. I would much prefer if they had had protective gear first and put on uh, the appropriate protective gear and then gone through the water because then their uniforms would not have been contaminated. But um, that's a individual decision. Um, if we plan such an activity, let's make sure we have the waders and the protective gear first. Next slide, please. So what does this all mean? Why do we care about this? Because the way emergency management works and the way the national incident management system works, you can't go to the party without an invitation. There are so many people who descend on a disaster scene, quote, wanting to help. Some of them go there to help themselves and not the community. And so until you are actually invited, you do not get missions assigned and you are not part of the official response. Freelancers are not welcome. Next slide. So here's my contact information. I am available to assist anyone in the development of their um, planning process for their own skills. And basically, we are working very quickly and very um, diligently to get the Florida MCC um, qualified to be eligible to deploy and do missions. Um, I did not see any questions on the chat, so now I'm going to open the microphones. If anybody has any questions, they're welcome to ask. All you need to do is unmute your microphone and then go ahead and address the question to Dan based on his presentation of saying how this whole process of MIMS and CERT and what we're asking each unit to do. Uh, the goal is that as units get competency and skills and get expertise, they'll get certifications. Those certifications will help us know who's ready for deployment. And the idea is to get that fast tracked as soon as possible without cutting corners, but to say, here are units that are specialized in this and this and this, and we'll know how to assign and send people to serve across the state of Florida. It's very exciting to dream about. I don't know if you saw it, but I think it's a beautiful thing. Okay. Dan, um, I have a question. Let's suppose that I am um, part of the church that want to have a medical cadet court and uh, we want uh, we are interested in do the uh, NIMS uh, CERT uh, classes. Uh, who I might contact for that? We have a brigade training officer who is the initial um, contact for 
of all aspects of training within the brigade, and that would be Fabuloso Francisco. Uh, and we are actually uh, coordinating with the uh, NIMS Association and local emergency management to try and bring in external instructors for the, um, there's Fab, wave your hand, there's Francisco. Um, and um, the coursework that we have on the website is prerequisite and preliminary work to assist in preparing the teams to be successful when they take the NIMS training. Even though I'm, I am the training officer, I have a team of persons who are the ones who know about it. I guess the coordinator, I guess another helper on the process. Like if you need uh, training, let me know what you need. And then we contact the person who are really knowledge on, on, on that aspect that you are asking for. Thank you. So I have a question, Dan. If I'm a unit and I'm wondering how do I contribute, should I, should I try to get good at everything or should I focus on specializing? What would you recommend as a unit? Should we try to get a core of people that are really good at a certain thing or should we try to do everything? Is there a preference? I think the first thing we need to do is become qualified as a CERT team. And that's the number one thing to do. And that's a 20 hour block of instruction that has to be spread over a number of weeks to get that done. Once we re reach that initial capability, and this is Dan speaking personally, we need to grow the core. And to grow the core, we need to become more qualified in training and recruiting and growing the core initially because I can become the greatest skilled anything you can imagine, but I'm just one person. But if I can recruit 10 other people who are just minimally qualified, that's still 10 people working rather than one. So I think in this initial growth phase for the Medical Cadet Corps, our initial priority is to become personally qualified and then grow the Corps and grow the qualifications of the court. Even though the superheroes, they, they have the team, they became together to do what they need to do. Yeah. And I think part of, part of what I was hoping you would touch on, Dan, is the dream of every unit kind of having their own specialty. So we don't need every unit to be specialized in chainsaw, you know, rescue stuff. Uh, we don't need every unit to be specialized in this or that. But when we have different units specialized in different areas collectively across the state, we are that much more capable to make that much more of an impact because we have a diversity of skills that each unit has specifically, but collectively it's even more complementary to the disaster or wherever we're serving. And Pastor, let me add one thing to that. Everything you basically na named is basically kinesthetic, it's physical. In a disaster, there is a huge need for non-kinesthetic skills. The um, behavioral aspect, the critical incident stress management, the um, behavioral first aid ministerial aspects are extremely important in very short supply. So in order to get there, we need to have the minimum skill set but once we are there, we have the opportunity to provide other services, both to the survivors of the incident and to our fellow responders from other jurisdictions. Excellent. Thank you very much. We have one minute left for any other comments or questions. Anything else for Dan based on his presentation? Going, going, gone. All right. I, go ahead, Ellie. Uh, okay, so right now I'm just doing my ENT. Um, I was hoping that, uh, well, is, is it going to help what after the after I'm done with my EMT, can I actually offer my um, FSTs, after I'm done with EMT, can I actually offer my my um, my knowledge to the MCC in general? Because you say you, you need people to actually teach the MCC, like certain stuff like EMR and other type of stuff. 
So does my EMT kind of help in a way for the MCC or has like, I want to help uh, teach others um, uh, skills that have become um, important for the, uh, for the cadet. Okay, so let me answer that question. A, your skills are critical and we're very glad for them. B, now we need to mentor you through the process of making you a tr official FEMA trainer. And once we do that, you will now be a EMT and a FEMA trainer. And then you can take your, EM EM your EMT skills and the FEMA skills together to help grow the core. Does that make okay. sense? Yes, that's, that's fair. Thank you. Great question and great response. Thank you very much. I, I have one a, a question, if I may. Okay. Um, yeah, kind of kind of along that line, a little more. Um, well, we basically ha we're having a uh, our 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 team is having training on on, on ham radio. Um, I'm, I'm doing the majority of the education part of it. I'm not an expert in it. Um, I just have a general a general class license. Um, so I'm not a I'm not a VE or anything like that. But um, one question I'm getting a lot is on the actual testing. Because of the COVID uh, restrictions, um, a lot of the testers for ham radio they're not going to they're not they're not giving this the the test. So we're we're taking trainings and I I don't see a foreseeable time slot in the future to be able to test. Um, I was just wondering if anyone, since uh, you know Dan uh, has a lot of uh, experience and probably has a lot of contacts. If he's able to help uh, help us out with uh, trying to help us get like a, tr a, a a testing date, if you know some some kind of VE or something or some some somebody who does the testing, that would be able I'm, to help us out. I am well connected in the amateur radio world, oh, um, so it's just a matter of identifying the need. It may not be the way we expected. Rather than testing 10 people on one day, it may be testing one person on 10 days. I can't tell you how it would look, but we can get there. Okay. Excellent. And Leo, if you could um, open in the chat and just send your email to Dan in the chat, and then you guys can connect.